75 years ago, members of the United States Marine Corps were engaged in the deadliest battle in the history of the Corps, the battle over the island of Iwo Jima. There's so many stories to tell about a battle of which Admiral Chester Nimitz said, among the Americans who served on Iwo Jima, uncommon valor was a common virtue. But one of the nearly forgotten parts of the battle was the deployment of a little-known marine weapon system that would have a large impact on the development of future military technology. These units were only deployed in a few battles in the Pacific, and yet it was on Iwo Jima, with its barren, treeless, hilly terrain, that they found their ideal battlefield. The Buck Rogers men of the Marine Provisional Rocket Detachments deserve to be remembered. Rockets are a very old concept in warfare. The first use of rockets in warfare is a matter of some dispute, but war rockets were documented as having been used by Chinese troops against invading Mongols, at least in the 13th century. Rockets were not uncommon in the Second World War, where they were used on land, sea, and air. For ground troops, rockets offered an ability to lay down a massive amount of high explosive in a very short period of time. They had various advantages over conventional artillery, allowing longer ranges and more flexible payloads, but they were notoriously inaccurate and slow to load. Multiple rocket launcher systems were developed to address those issues. Some of those systems were rather famous. The Russian Katusha, or Kate rockets, and the German Nebelwerfer, or smoke mortar rockets, were produced in huge numbers and terrifying to enemy troops. The Western Allies were slower to deploy such systems, with the British and Commonwealth using the land mattress and the U.S. Army deploying a truck-mounted T-27 xylophone and the tank-mounted T-34 calliope. These weapons didn't enter service in Europe until 1944, but the first uses by the U.S. Army were by the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade in New Guinea in 1943. The U.S. M-8 rocket system relied on information shared from the British, and specifications for what would be the M-8 rocket were agreed upon in 1941. The primary use of the rocket was as an air-to-ground weapon, and the hope was to have them available for the Army Air Forces by the start of Operation Torch in October 1942. The ground version, called the Barrage Rocket, as well as the larger T-40 Whiz-Bang, would be deployed by the U.S. Army in Europe starting in 1944. But the U.S. Army really saw rockets as a novelty. There were only a few tanks that were ever modified. There was only ever one battalion created. The weapons were always designated with a T. That means test. The use of multiple rocket launcher systems by the Marines in the Pacific seems to be far less well known, but the Marines actually embraced rockets much more than the Army did. There was surprisingly little documentation of the official decision making involved in the Marines' decision to create mobile rocket units, but the idea was likely related to the Navy. While the U.S. did not field ground-based rocket systems in the numbers that other armies did, the U.S. Navy was a leader in the development of rockets as a naval bombardment weapon, where they were seen as a way to provide more substantial pre-assault bombardment for amphibious operations. Rockets could be carried by landing craft designed for shallow water, allowing the bombardment to move with the landing force, whereas traditional naval bombardment would have had to move their fire inland to avoid hitting their own troops. It was an effective tool. At Iwo Jima, a line of landing ship medium rocket, or LSMRs, carrying nearly 500 launchers each, poured around 10,000 rockets into the beach in a matter of minutes. Being able to fire so close to the landing force caused the defenders to stay under cover much longer. One of the original test facilities for the Navy was off the coast of a Marine base, Camp Pendleton, California. The Marines had allowed the use of the base to test both sea and land-based rockets, and it's likely there that they recognized the weapon's potential. In an amphibious landing, it takes time to land and deploy artillery to support ground operations. The Marines saw lightweight, vehicle-mounted rocket launchers as artillery support that could be brought into action quickly when assaulting enemy-held beaches. The Marines established a school to train rocketers at Camp Beaumont on the Hawaiian island of Oahu. The school was called Rocket School, and the Marines were quick to dub the newly trained rocketers Buck Rogers men. First class graduated in April. A Marine Provisional Rocket Detachment consisted of one officer and 57 enlisted men. The detachments used a modified version of the International Harvester 1-ton 4x4 model M24 truck. While International Harvester produced a number of vehicles used in the war, including tanks and tractors, as well as gun mounts and even weapons, including the M1 rifle, the one-ton 4x4 truck was produced only for the Navy and Marines. The truck had no cab, just a one-piece windshield and two front bucket seats. Three box-shaped launchers, each holding 12 rockets, were mounted over the rear axle. The truck included a trailer to carry additional rockets. 
The M8 rocket was 33 inches long, had a diameter of 4.5 inches, and weighed about 8 pounds. Each warhead contained 4.3 pounds of high explosive. The rockets had a range of more than 2.5 miles and were fired in a ripple, that is, one from each of the three launchers fired singly in rapid succession. The technique was helpful in reducing the blast effect on the next rocket. A good crew could fire a ripple of 36 rockets in a matter of just a few seconds, laying down a huge amount of fire that, even if they failed to destroy entrenched enemy positions, would certainly suppress enemy fire. The detachments were assigned directly to individual marine divisions where they could provide concentration of fire for special needs. The rocket detachments were first deployed against the Japanese on Saipan in June of 1944, where the 1st Provisional Marine Rocket Detachment was assigned to the 4th Marine Division, and the 2nd Provisional Rocket Detachment was assigned to the 2nd Marine Division. Tactics had not been developed for the units yet, and they had to learn by trial and error. One issue was that the light trucks had little protection. On Saipan, the trucks were initially deployed ahead of the infantry to maximize range. They quickly learned to deploy immediately behind the firing line to prevent them being overrun by the enemy. While the rocket detachment salvos were said to be morale lifting for the marines, they had limited effect on Japanese troops that were hiding in caves or in bunkers. Still, the rocket salvos came so fast that the Japanese thought the marines had developed automatic artillery and were effective suppressing fire preceding an assault. Despite the fact that field commanders were largely unaware of their capabilities, units were so popular that they suffered from a shortage of ammunition on Saipan and had to borrow from their naval counterparts. While the rockets laid down a lot of fire, they also made a lot of smoke and usually drew enemy counter-battery fire. This became the basis of a love-hate relationship between the infantry and the Buck Rogers men. The infantry loved the ability to put fire on the target, but did not like the heavy return fire. The crews learned to displace quickly after firing, something that today is called shoot and scoot, and the infantry learned not to hang out too close in order to avoid the inevitable return fire from Japanese artillery. Based on their experience in the field, Marines modified the small trucks by reinforcing the tailgate to serve as a blast shield and installing a hydraulic jack to raise and lower the launchers. Gunnery Sergeant S. E. Estes developed a gravity quadrant that could be checked quickly with his gunner's quadrant, allowing more rapid elevation adjustments. Five provisional rocket detachments were outfitted by the end of 1944, and a six was outfitted in July of 1945. All six saw significant service, and the detachments were used throughout the island campaigns, but it was on Iwo Jima, a treeless, hilly island, that their short range, steep angle of attack, and ability to put fire on target found their ideal battlefield. For the invasion of Iwo Jima, the 1st Provisional Rocket Detachment supported the 4th Marine Division, while the 3rd Detachment supported the 5th Division. A section of four vehicles from the 3rd Detachment landed on D-Day seven hours after operations began, on Red Beach. The beach was a dangerous place, filled with vehicles lost to the surf, the heavy black volcanic sand, and enemy fire. But one vehicle reached its firing position intact and immediately proved its worth, launching a salvo of rockets against Japanese fortifications along the slopes of Mount Suribachi, detonating an enemy ammunition dump. The detachment subsequently supported the 1st Battalion of the 28th Marines as they advanced to the summit. It was dangerous work. Benjamin Cerigliano enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps in October 1942 and fought in the Battle of Tarawa. He was carrying a Browning automatic rifle when he was wounded in the Battle of Saipan, waking up in a hospital in Hawaii and not remembering how he got there. He requested reassignment to a heavy weapons company and became a Buck Rogers man, assigned to the 1st Rocket Detachment with the 4th Marine Division. The detachment landed on D-Day Plus One. It was with the detachment that Cerigliano earned his third Purple Heart, and Iwo Jima would be his last battle, his third wound, sending him home. On the 14th day of the battle, Edwin Cantor, a crew chief with the 1st Rocket Detachment who had served both on Saipan and Tinian, was shot by a sniper as his detachment prepared to fire. A Coast Guard film crew happened to catch his crew, pulling him to safety. But counter-battery fire from the Japanese then killed the two Coast Guardsmen and wounded Cantor a second time. The film, however, survived, and the scene where his crew was dragging him to safety was included in the John Wayne epic, The Sands of Iwo Jima. Cantor survived, received a Purple Heart, and a ticket home. The rockets proved their value on Iwo Jima. Because of their steep angle of fire, they were particularly good at defilade to defilade fire, or firing from behind the crest of one hill to the reverse slope. Valuable work on a hilly island as Marines had to assault over those hills. In all, the two detachments on Iwo Jima fired over 30,000 rockets. 
The 4.5 inch rockets weren't actually the only rockets that were used by the provisional rocket detachments in the Battle of Iwo Jima. Late in the battle, they were issued some of the much larger 7.2 inch whiz bang rockets. Those rockets were too large to mount on a vehicle, and so they were towed on a sled behind a tractor or a tank using an improvised 20 tube launcher. They could lob an impressive 650 pounds of high explosive in a single salvo, but even they proved unable to dislodge Japanese who were dug into mountain tunnels. And the Japanese had their own rockets on Iwo Jima, the spin-stabilized Type 4 20cm rocket launcher. It was used to some effect, but the Japanese essentially used the launcher like a mortar, not as a multiple rocket launcher. The detachments learned quite a lot on Iwo Jima, not just about tactics and the modifications they made to the vehicles, but also about things like personnel and supply. The original detachments had not been assigned men to serve as ammunition carriers, which put extra stress on the rest of the crew, and the detachment commanders realized that the vehicles and their ammunition supply had to be given a higher priority in the landing order. But as Marine Major Andrew F. Mazzara noted in a 1987 history of Marine artillery rockets, in a relatively short period of time, they'd acquired a weapon system that was unlike any other weapon heretofore used by the Leathernecks in combat. The systems were improved with greater range and accuracy. Rocket detachments went on to serve with the Marines in the Korean War and continued to serve today in the form of the M142 High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS. While they weren't exactly the best known weapon of the war, the Marines of the Provisional Rocket Detachments provided valuable service in the island campaign and developed strategies and tactics that continue to affect military thinking today.